Well hi folks, just give you a quick look at what's going on now. Start off in the greenhouse with a few little seedlings. Nothing's really growing that quickly at the moment for some reason, but uh, it's all getting started off. So that's some of the uh, lettuces just starting off, the multi-green and red. I had to sow those again because I, I think I sowed a duff packet. And then uh, we've got a few iceberg in there. Nothing seems to be growing that, that fast for some reason. Whether it's a bit of a duff batch of compost, I don't know. but. We'll see, once it warms up it should. A few bits of kale growing there. Again, quite slowly. Spring onions, little bunches of spring onions. They're about ready to go out now, in fact. They won't take any harm. And then some of the zebrun shallots. Again, not growing. You usually plant them out the end of this month, which is, you know, only a few days away, and they're always a lot bigger than that. But this year they just seem a bit slow. Whether I planted them late, I'm not too sure. But it doesn't matter, they'll catch up. This is some of that new broccoli that I'm trying. It's apparently it's 60 days from sowing to, to a harvest. Just little spears, so we'll give it, giving that a go. A few more lettuces, some little gem there, and a few more of the zebra shallots. And then the two lots of leeks in the box. They're going slowly. I usually plant those out about the middle of May. Well, usually a lot bigger than that. Like I said, I've used all the same compost. This is the Jack's Magic compost. There's nothing wrong with them, you know, they're not distorted or looking like they've been poisoned, but whether or not there's not any, a lot of compost in it, um, fertiliser in it or something, I don't know. Anyway, that's the little seedlings, and these are the spuds in pots, which are doing really well. They do tend to get a bit leggy, as you can see, when they're grown in the greenhouse in heat. But should be ready in a, well, I would say two or three weeks. Should have a few spuds. Strange thing is, I'm starting to get a few mushrooms growing in the compost, if you see. Because I left the compost in last year, and it's actually the same compost I grew in last year. And there was a mushroom in here, so it might have sent some spores out, but apparently it's not It's not a poisonous one, and all the, it won't do any harm to the potatoes, so jobs are good. And I'm not going to try eating it anyway. So there are the spuds in pots, that's in the greenhouse, which I have got use of again for, so, for as long as I can. So, uh, not a great deal going on, so we'll just nip up to the plot and then I'll show you what other stuff I've got growing at home. So I'll just show you what's in the grow tent, I've just uh, I'll take the onions out. So I've got some peppers that I've been growing downstairs under another light, I've moved them into this one where it's a bit warmer now. These are some banana peppers and an odd... Um, Oh, jalapeno chilli, you know, just a, a really weak one, which I don't mind eating. So there's a few banana banana peppers, sweet peppers in there, and they'll go back in there because they're on top of where me, I've been trying to germinate my giant marrows. I've got some seeds this year from Mark Bags, which is fantastic. He sent me loads of his seed from some of his 180 pounders he grew last year. And under, I've got, I think they're just, if I zoom in, there's one just germinating there. <laughs> so we'll see how they get on. I'm really looking forward to giving those a go. Try and get this to focus. Oops. Go on, focus. And I'll have to stop it. Bit of a camera malfunction there. So anyway, what else have we got in here? Got my giant carrots in the pipes. Growing in the tubes there. They should be growing out in about middle of May. I'm not expecting much from those because I did sow them a bit too late. The giant potatoes, I've repotted those on into um, that six inch pots now. Same thing, once the frosts have passed, I'll plant those out in the polytunnel. Some of the Joe's long chilies, gonna try and grow some of those for Harrogate for the chili plant competition. And then some of those, I found a big Zabrun shallot, and I'm gonna try and just put one to seed and see if I can get some seed from it myself, like I do with the onions, and then see how that grows because, not that it's expensive seed, but it'd be nice to to see what it's like, maybe reselect your seed from a really nice bulb. So anyway, it's a bit crowded in here, so things are doing okay. Oh yeah, under there, I've got some French beans germinating, and the first cucumbers have just up, and there's no sign of any cause yet yet. But really, that's about it. I've not actually grown any tomatoes this year, so I've had to buy some from the market, and I'm just really growing those uh, tumbling tomatoes, the little hanging basket ones, and an odd Gardener's Delight and one Shirley, because we don't eat that many tomatoes and they take a lot of compost and room up, so I'm just sticking to that. That's why I've not really grown any due to a lack of room. So anyway, that's what's going on in the 
under the grow lights inside. I'll just show you what's going on at the, up at the plot. Well, hi folks, here we are up at the plot. Forgive the traffic noise because it's Saturday night about 7 o'clock and everyone seems to be out on the road. It sounds like a motorway. So I'll just give you a quick look round, see what's going on. These are the peas, the gut of peas that I planted less well about a week ago actually as you can see they've taken fantastically growing really well now really thick and bushy people have said how do you get them to cling on to there so I just let them grow up a bit and then put a, put a string across and just tie them to it and once they've uh, attached themselves they'll start growing up it so that's the piece couldn't be happier with those I've been having a right good tidy up in this bit it was just full of junk and weeds and moss and rubbish so I've been having a bit of a spring clean nothing in this bit yet this is where the uh, shallots are going to be going in and the leeks a bit later on and that's the few onion sets just starting to sprout now the heat treated ones and garlic's really good this year so far well I plant mine a lot later than most people but we've got a full set up there about 20 in each row so all 60 have come up Looking quite good, probably get battered, there's a bit of wind coming, but looking strong enough. I've managed to get all the potatoes in now, so I've got 12 pots I think. 5, 10, no 13. So I've got 4 lots of Nicola, 5 little Sarpos, and 4 Blue Danube I think, yeah. So they're all in there, just waiting to grow up. So like I said, I've been having a real good spring clean. I'm really proud of what I did here. It might not, it might still look a mess to you lot, but it was absolutely this where I put a patio down. Everything had been just completely neglected last year with all my walls and stuff. And it was just covered in soil and moss and rubbish. And so I just I spent an afternoon when we had a really nice sunny day. Just got it all cleaned out. So it's actually functional now. Chopped my tree down a bit and the bush so I can actually get through because you couldn't get through it. So yeah, just had a bit of a tidy up, got my mojo back a bit and actually enjoying doing it. The reason I've left these weeds in there, they're perennial docks, so I've just given them a bit of glyphosate, just spot weeded each one, so that should kill them. A few little gooseberry bushes, they're the little ones I planted, I think, last year or the year before. They were just a little, tiny little sticks when I planted them, about that big. And they looked absolutely pathetic, but two years later, we should get a little crop off them, so... It's all about patience really. And after the wars with the rhubarb this year, when I left the net on and all the uh, the pheasants started eating the shoots, I've got a nice little crop coming now. This is the raspberry champagne or something it's called. If you can see, it's unbelievably dark red. It's the sweetest rhubarb imaginable. Not the greatest cropper, but so, so sweet and red. So what I've done, I've got some more crowns. They look absolutely feeble. Look at that, I've got them out of a catalogue. And I've, that's what they call a crown. Can you believe it? It was a piece of root about that big. Three for 15 bloody quid. So anyway, I planted some, and they will grow. It'll take, probably take about 400 years before I get a crop, but like I said, patience. So this is where I'm growing my second lot of peas. Bit of a bit of tidied up through my wilderness bit. So I've been doing some weed killing, I've got loads of nettles and I've got loads of perennial flowers in here like iris and things like that and poppies and there's no way you can dig them out because you just kill everything so I've just, just spot weeded so hopefully that'll kill all the nasty bits and keep all the good stuff so we'll go into the polytunnel not a great deal going on in here all the ground's just prepared again this is where the giant carrots will be going or, and or potatoes ground's all been prepared same thing with the spuds, but the giant carrot, well not sorry, the giant carrots, the show, the long show carrots have all sprouted now in the barrels. I think we're all here, yeah, that was one that was missing and that's just about coming up. And likewise, the stump carrots, the exhibition show carrots have come up. I've had a bit of a pest in one of them though, so I'm not missing any, but I did notice that something had nibbled, if you see the little dead thing there, dead dead bit and it's obviously something that's come up from the soil because it had left like a like a little worm cast on the top so I don't know what on earth that is, whether there's a little grub in there or something doing its nastiness and I think if someone's had, something's had that one as well so 
I'll just have to soak a couple more and hope it doesn't persist. So they're all up, which is good. Again, just ground covered up. This is where the French beans will be going. I'll put the frame up and everything. So finally, onto the onions. I'll just show you these. See what you think of them. Couldn't be happier with those at the moment. If I try and give you some perspective, put my hand in. Doing really well now. The new growth really strong and thick. The first growth, obviously, in the in the growth growth tent was quite spindly because it's not as bright as being outside. But looking better than I've ever grown them at this stage before. So I'm really chuffed with these. That's the one in the air pot. Trying a different method. They're all different mixes of compost, but they're all out now. Planted them out later than normal, so that should have benefited him a little bit. What I need to do now is make some bigger, bigger sort of hoops to support the leaves. And I'm going to do that. I'll make some out of some uh, horse pipe, I think. So I'll just see how hot or cold it's got today. Sun came out a little bit, so maximum. <clears throat> I'm just forget forget the outside one. That's a little probe that always gets hotter. So in today, 29.8 could be better. Just, just the cold that's the main one. 2.7 it got down to, but it was supposed to be frost outside, so at least it's keeping the frost off, so not too bad, but there's nothing I can do about it. I've had when I've grown giant onions before they've had they've actually had frost and none of them have sort of had any problems with it. So that's about it folks. Quick roundup of the polytunnel. Like I said, not a lot going on up here yet. We should be getting most of it planted out in the next fortnight. I'll just come out and try and get out without falling over. Lovely night tonight, it's supposed to be really cold tonight. But anyway folks, that's about it. All the blooming traffic. Lovely night. Quick roundup. See you later.